And now we just want to cut around the stomach and cut those guts off. I'm just cutting the mouth off. And what you're left with is the entire edible part of the abalone. Now what I'm going to do is just slice it into pieces and then I'm going to pound it to tenderize it. Now I can cut the pieces so thick because when I tenderize it, it's going to be very, very tender. Now once you get your abalone sliced and cleaned, now you got to pound it. If you try to eat it just as it is after you slice it, it's going to be super, super tough. Like I took a bite like that, it's just crunchy. It's not bad. You can eat it raw. There's no parasites or anything. But in my opinion, it's so much better if you cook it with a little bit of butter, salt, and pepper. So I'm gonna take these thick pieces that I cut. I found a flat rock. I'm on the river. I'm in Crescent City now. And all I'm gonna do is just pound it until it's soft and it can bend really easily. Now when I cook it, it's gonna be super tender when I cook it, when I, when I bite into it. You'll know when it's tender because when you hit it, it'll hit, 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 and then the meat will just give. One more hit and it'll just be mush. So you want it just before it's mush. See how thick that piece is? Now that thick piece is going to be amazing once I cook it. So I'm gonna finish the rest of these abalone and then I'll be back with a little bit of butter. So I came over here to get out of the wind. Now time to season the abalone. All I'm using is a little salt, pepper, and garlic. At least that's probably my favorite combination for any kind of seafood. I'm gonna get a good little chunk out here. It doesn't take long for this abalone to cook at all. Just a couple of minutes each side, and that's it. So I am in Crescent City right now, just south of the Oregon border. So this is the last spot where I can use my California fishing license. Now steelhead and salmon are not in season right now, so the only thing that I can go for is trout. The thing is, you can't use worms, you can't use live bait. You have to use artificial lures for trout. And another thing, you can't use barbed hooks. You have to use barbless hooks. Got a clean rock here, I'll let them cool down right there. This abalone is such a strange texture, such a strange flavor. The texture is just like meat of some kind. Like if I had never had abalone before and somebody served this to me, I would have no idea what it was. It would be good, but I would have no idea what it was. This stuff goes for $50 a pound. Sometimes you can get a 10 inch abalone that weighs 10 pounds. So if you sold that on the black market, that would be $500. That's why people poach these things. Not to give you any ideas. But all right, I'm gonna finish this up, try my luck at some trout fishing. If I don't catch anything here, I'll be back bright and early tomorrow morning. All righty, it's getting pretty windy in this valley. I don't think I'll be fishing much today, but while I'm out here, I just got to try it. So my setup is a bobber, a bobber stopper on top of that, a split shot weight, really small one, I think it's a 1 16th, and a fly, the black zebra midge, tiny little thing. I don't know if you can tell, but it's really deep water right here. This would be a good spot for a spinner if I could stand on those rocks over there and cast upstream and reel in, but... Let me just try this fly since I've got it on right now. It's a lot deeper, so I'm gonna set the depth a lot higher. All right, it's about four, four feet now, five feet. This little black zebra midge imitates a little mosquito larva, I think. Man, I think this is gonna be tough. I see another spot down there. I'm gonna try down there, or else I'm just gonna call it a day. Try again tomorrow.
Well, it's the morning time. I just cooked me some breakfast. Just some eggs and blueberries for breakfast. But I'm in Jedediah Redwood State Park in Crescent City, about 40 miles from the border of Oregon. I'm about to do a little bit of fishing on the Smith River today. So hopefully I can get them with the flies and I bought artificial night crawlers. I don't know if that's cheating or not. Hopefully it's not, I don't know. Gotta do what you gotta do. Anyway, this is an example of one of the redwoods. This thing right here. I guess they cut it down to make room for this campsite, but look how huge it is. And that's actually a small one. So I'm gonna show you around this area. I am still by the coast, but we're inland just a little bit. So it's, it's gorgeous up here. And there's just huge trees as far as you can see, 200 feet tall, just lining the highway. It's pretty amazing. Anyway, it's uh, getting a little bit late, so I'm gonna pack up and get out of here, get on the river right now. Looks good to me. Pretty shallow here. Comes in, drops off, it's deep here. So I can float my little fly along here. And if that doesn't work, I can switch to that little night crawler. I'm gonna cast it upstream, let it swim down. I don't know, I'm gonna use a spinner for now. Switch to a night crawler later. You ever get the feeling that you're being watched? Just got that strangest feeling while I was down there. Don't know what it is, it might be my imagination. It might be a bear, it might be a mountain lion, it might be a weird guy. It might be nothing at all, but anyway, I'll just trust my instincts. Fishing's not very good down there anyway, so. Gonna head out, look for a little bit more water, more faster flowing water, try again. All right, well, believe it or not, I actually found a place that's still covered with some shade. It's already about 10 o'clock in the morning, and this is probably my best bet to catch fish. Oh, there's one right there. First cast. It's barbless hook though, so I gotta be careful. Oh, it's a little tiny guy. I just wet my hands first, so he'll be okay. But look, little, little rainbow trout is probably wild too. But first cast on that artificial Berkeley Gulp Nightcrawler. You would think I was sponsored by Berkeley Gulp, but I'm not. It's just, just happens to be the only artificial nightcrawler. So I'm gonna put this little guy back and hopefully another bigger one hits it. So this is what the setup looks like. Just a small split shot on top, six pound mainline, no leader or anything, and this is the the night crawler, the artificial night crawler. Looks just like the real thing. First cast, got hit, surprised me. Let's see what else is in this river. Oh, there's a bite, there's a fish. Man, little dinky, little dinky thing. Another little guy. All right, let's put him back. Every cast I get a bite. Every cast is a little, little trout like that one. Good thing about this barbless hook, easy to catch and release. Well, that's three fish already caught on this one little, I keep thinking Berkeley Gulp sandworm, but no, this little night crawler. Well, I'm gonna move down river just a little bit, see if I can get a little bigger fish. One more cast here. Now, before I change fishing spots, I gotta load up on these berries because there's this whole side of the mountain full of them. All right, well, the water is a little bit more deep over here. Hoping the bigger fish are hiding over here. 
This one's a little bit bigger. I mean, barely. All right, let's see if my theory is correct. And let's see if a bigger fish is hiding behind these two streams right here. Damn. I know it's barbless only, but sometimes you just can't help but gut hook him, even though it is barbless. He ate this thing all the way down. Little rainbow. I mean, I could get a couple good bites out of him. So since he is gut hooked, look, there's no way that I can get this out. There's no way I can get that out without pulling his stomach out or something. So. So even though he's a tiny little guy, I'll just have him, I'll have him as a little side course in a meal later on today. Still gonna be good for sure, but dang. Oh, he came off. He came off. Huh, uh, that was surprising. All right, let me get him back in the water, see if he'll swim off. Yeah, he's good, swam away. Wow, saved a fish. Well, not too much luck here at the Smith River. I think I'm gonna call it a day for this river fishing. I'm gonna head on up to Oregon now. It's not gonna take me about 10 or 15 minutes to get up there. Next stop is the Winchester Jetty in Oregon. Man, it feels good to be out on these rocks again. It feels natural to be out on a jetty like this. Almost feels like home. So I'm at Winchester Bay in Oregon. I came out here originally to try fishing on the jetty, see how it does compared to Half Moon Bay jetty. I heard that people are catching salmon from the jetty right here in this channel where it feeds into the ocean. This is the Umpqua River and it feeds into the ocean and people have been catching them on spinners. So this is what I'm going to be using all day instead of fishing the holes, fishing the rocks. It's a one and a half ounce. Four salmon, four Chinook salmon were caught here yesterday, but they all broke off because everybody didn't have strong enough line. I've got 40 pound test braid, 30 pound fluorocarbon leader, going to this 1.5 ounce spinner. Wish me luck, because I'm going to need it. I'm going to be out here all day throwing this thing. Hope my arm doesn't fall off. I'm going to be throwing this all day. It's 10 o'clock right now, low tide is at 11.30. They're trolling for salmon there too. So I know I'm in the right spot. Got six boats trolling right here. I'm the only fisherman from the bank. Man, it is 2.30 right now. I've been fishing since 10 o'clock, not a single bite for salmon. I know salmon fishing from the bank can be slow, but man, that's just too much to take. So I switched over to rockfish. I gotta head up to Washington next, it's a five hour drive, but I don't wanna leave here without catching anything. So I've got a piece of shrimp on here and a Berkeley gulp sandworm that looks like a, a, a blood worm. So just gonna see if anything's gonna bite that before I give up completely on Winchester, Oregon. Geez, this is like watching me not catch fish. What's the point of that? Let's see if something bites. Fingers crossed, come on. Got my first Oregon fish. A little sculpin, extremely poisonous. And these horns are really sharp. They're hard. They look soft, but they're not. They're hard. And I know that they're poisonous too. You see how camouflaged it is? You know that there's rockfish down there too, if, if this thing is down there. First Oregon fish, finally. At least I'm on the board. That feels good. Look, an Oregon kelp greenling. Exactly like we have in California. I know in California, these need to be 12 inches. I'm not sure about out here. But there are a lot, there's a lot of meat on this fish. I don't think he's, he's not big enough to eat anyway, so I'll release him. Well, that's not bad, two casts after that. So the skunk's off the jetty. I'm gonna go to the end of the jetty, fish that a little bit before I gotta head up to Raymond. Five hour trip to Raymond, Washington next. Well, they may not be keepers, 
But those two were my first Oregon fish ever. A little bullhead sculpin and a little kelp greenling. So I will always remember those two fish from now on. I don't know if you guys have ever watched the show Alone. I think it's on the History Channel. Uh, Joe Robinette Bushcraft was on it. I watch him, he's a YouTuber. But anyway, this coastline and all these trees you see behind me, it really reminds me of Alaska, where that film is, was based. It's really, really, it's a beautiful coastline up here. It's a lot different than California. There's a lot more redwood trees. There's a lot more just trees and cliffs. And, oh, oh man. Good bite right there. Oh, this one's a little bit bigger, whatever this is. Oh, I see it down there. Oh, it's an, a bigger kelp greenling. This one's nice. Dang. Can I keep this? Let me do some research real quick. This one's a little bit bigger, and these are good eating. I really like to eat these. These are, look how much meat there is. That's almost all meat. So just like in California, it's 12 inches. This one is going to be close. Dang, he's just short. He's 11 and a half inches. They need to be 12 inches. So I gotta release him. Shoot, that's all my bait. I've got a couple Berkeley Gulp sandworms. I'll try that and then I'll head up to Washington.